Hey everyone, Tyler Binkley here, and today we're going over the looping all the sides section of Swift Playgrounds, which can be found in the for loops chapter of Learn to Code One. So we are down here in the for loops, looping all the sides. The goal says use a for loop to repeat a sequence of commands. And so you, you see the next line says, in this puzzle, you must collect four gems that are located in the same relative locations around a square. You'll create a loop that repeats the code below for each of the sides to solve the entire puzzle. Uh, and you know, when you look at this, I do notice that, okay, the left side where Byte is standing uh, has, a, <clears throat> has a gem right in front of him. When we make that next turn, this row on the left-hand side has a gem one tile in front of where he'll be. This one has a gem. So the gem is in the same location on each side. And that's important because, you know, when you notice a pattern like that, patterns, pattern recognition in Swift coding is so important because once you recognize a pattern, you can then use either a function or a loop to make your life so much easier and save you the hassle of uh, a, lot of, a lot more time in coding that otherwise would need, be needed. So number one says, select four in the shortcut bar to add a for loop into your code. So I have to tap on this first line to get some options available here. And now we're gonna go ahead and tap on the for option because that's what it wanted us to do. And notice they're, they're actually, they are giving us the code for one side or you know one side of this square here. It's move forward, collect gem, move forward, move forward, move forward, turn right. I mean, that right there is the correct way to solve a side of the square. And they're, they're showing us here a nice little shortcut since, you know, that's one side. Well, why don't we do that for all four sides instead of having to, you know, go below and enter in all of, the, all of that code a second, a third, and a fourth time. So they're giving us a little shortcut saying we can press the bottom curly bracket, right? We can press on it. So I'm going to tap on it. You get it, make it blue first. And now you have those dots that allow you to kind of drag it. And see, that's going to include everything below into it. And see, we need that because if we, whatever in a loop or a function, whenever you want it to be a part of something, like your code needs to be in that bracket. So now down below, if I did anything um, down below here, that would not be a part of the loop, you know, where my cursor is blinking right now. Uh, so, you know, it's important that my for what I want to loop needs to be inside of those curly brackets. And now the last thing I have to do is put a number in. And since a square has four sides, we should all be familiar. And you know, there's four equal sides. They're all the same pattern. That's why I can just go here and put the number four in where it says number. And this should work. I mean, if we look at this, it's going to move forward, collect gem, move forward, move forward, move forward, turn right. And it's going to loop and do that four times total, completing all four sides of this square. And what's really nice, again, is that we were able to solve this puzzle with just this many lines of code. You know, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the loop. And that's it, as opposed to having to do it um, six times four and get 24 lines of code, which certainly is doable, but... That's a lot more time consuming, a lot more chances for making a mistake. Loops can, can help solve that a little bit. So hope you found this helpful.